RX 9000 GPUs are selling like mad, AMD GPUs are set to get a huge boost, and a new gaming GPU that gets 10 times the performance of NVIDIA's 5090? This is gonna be wild. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, this story originally comes from the German outlet Computerbase, where they asked a bunch of survey questions to their readers regarding next-gen GPUs, specifically which ones they bought, RX 9000, RTX 5000, which ones they plan to buy, a bunch of questions like that, and then some of these were compiled into this graph by 3D Center. Specifically, you can see it says GPU sales by Computerbase readers. And what's wild is that more people bought AMD's RX 9000 GPUs, the 9070 XT and 9070, than all of NVIDIA's RTX 5000 cards, meaning they bought more of the two AMD GPUs than all four of NVIDIA's GPUs. And not only that, but I also did a similar survey on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it. And don't get me wrong, I just now posted this, like just recently. So of course, these this doesn't really matter at all at this point. But I say this just to let you know that if you recently purchased a new GPU or even if you didn't purchase one, make sure to check out my X account down in the description below so you can answer this survey. And definitely make sure to do it quickly because you have less than 24 hours to do it, but I think it's gonna reveal some interesting stuff. Either way, when we move back to the results of this survey right here, I will say that it doesn't give us too much information just because obviously it doesn't account for selection bias, so their readers could be very biased towards AMD or potentially even towards Nvidia, and not only that, but all GPUs right now are sold out. So even if you wanted an RTX 5000 card or RX 9000 card, you couldn't get it. One thing I do think it says is just how many more GPUs AMD released as far as stock, not number of GPUs, but how much more they released versus Nvidia. I mean, there's a good chance that they release significantly more with their RX 9000 series than all of Nvidia's RTX 5000 series. And it also shows us that clearly these cards are very well received and they're selling like mad just because given how much stock AMD clearly had of their RX 9000 cards, they still sold out. I mean, this right here is a whopping 4,219 participants during this survey. So this is a pretty large sample size. But first, it's monitor madness at Micro Center. That means you get to save big on a wide range of monitors all month long. Like this 1440p 180Hz monitor for just 200 bucks, or this 180Hz monitor with G-Sync for 120 bucks. You know it's a big deal because I've got a wacky inflatable arm flailing tube man. It's all for the month of March and it's only at Micro Center. This video is sponsored by Micro Center. Something something rolls a blast small print. Of course, Micro Center is the only place you can go in person to get everything you could want for your PC build. From motherboards to PC cases, GPUs, they've got it all. And they have it at some of the best deals out there. It's why I chose Micro Center to get parts for my first ever PC build. Oh, and if you're near Santa Clara, California, Micro Center is opening a new store. And if you visit my link in the description and take the coupon to the store when they open, you can get a free 128 gig flash drive. Once again, visit my link in the description below. And next up for today, AMD's new machine learning based FSR4 has been very well received, proving that AI based upscaling is likely the way to go. And the good news is that AMD allows an option to upgrade certain FSR 3.1 games to FSR4, which is nice. But believe it or not, modders have found a way to do even more. As you can see right down here, this comes from a new tool called OptiScaler. And as you can see, it says it's a tool that will enable support for FSR2, FSR3, and FSR4. And this is why I was saying basically all AMD GPUs. So it adds FSR2, 3, and 4, as well as XESS in games that already have the DLSS upscaler enabled. Apparently, it can also work the other way around, but that is apparently more complicated. Either way, at the very least, it can add FSR 2, 3, 4, as well as XESS in basically all DLSS games. Well, not all of them. This one does require DLSS 2 or newer, but still, this is 
very interesting stuff. And what's wild is that even though it's only been out for like a few days at this point, some people are already putting things on YouTube about it, as you can see in this video right here. So it shows Intel XE super sampling as well as DLSS frame generation. And yes, this also works with frame gen, but you can see, so he goes through that, but then he pulls this up and yes, it actually can work with FSR 4.0. Let's kind of look at a little of this footage and let's look at some of this footage. You can see, you know, it looks pretty decent. It looks fairly smooth. So yeah, it definitely doesn't look all that bad. And if you're interested in this tool, it is on GitHub. I'll have a link to it in the description below. And lastly for today, we have quite possibly the biggest story in like the last decade if this ends up coming to fruition. As you can see right here, this story originally comes from Tom's Hardware and man, this is seriously huge. So basically there's a new startup. Now when I say new, they aren't that new. They originated back in 2020, but they still are fairly new in terms of things. And well, let's just kind of go through it. This seriously is wild. This company is called Bolt Graphics and they're a GPU startup from California. And this week they introduced its Zeus GPU platform that is designed for, yeah, rendering supercomputer simulations, but also gaming. And you can actually see this specifically on their website right here. Talks about architecture and design, film and television, HPC, gaming. So this really is looking like an actual gaming GPU that they're set to release. And before I get too deep into it, I also want to state that apparently they are planning to release something early this year, as well as do demos and things like that. So while you do want to take this with a pretty big grain of salt, at the same time, it could be something to actually get excited about, but don't get too excited just yet, but do get excited if they do end up releasing something anyway. Let's get back to it. So once again, like I said, this is done by Bolt Graphics and basically this company started to work on things like real time ray tracing, path tracing really specifically, and just kind of enabled that in uh, movies, gaming, stuff like that. And as you can see this right here, we are talking risk V now for those who don't know what that is, it's similar to arm. It's not like an offshoot or anything like that, but they share a similar instruction set, which is risk. Regardless, this is based on risk V and it's actually a multi chiplet GPU. So think of multiple chiplets combined into one to actually just be one GPU. And we're actually talking multi chiplets where the actual cores of the GPU are within multi chiplet, not how AMD does it with RDNA three, where they have all the graphics cores on one chiplet and then the memory on another. So it's not like that. This is seriously wild. Once again, this is based on Zeus and you can see it says the Zeus core relies on an open source out of order, general purpose RVA 23 scalar core. So that, probably doesn't mean much to you, but basically it can handle 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit, and 64-bit data types. And see, what's wild is that when I was really first kind of reading about this, I'm like, okay, this is more of a compute GPU, something like that. It's not actually going to particularly be for gaming, but What's wild is that you can see Tom's hardware sort of had the same thought. It says as Zeus is aimed at path tracing rendering techniques, as well as compute workloads, we weren't sure whether it would have a traditional fixed function GPU hardware like texture units and raster operation units. So ROPS, but the company reached out to them and said that Zeus does have TMU and ROP engines, but that it's not disclosing any of the specifications just yet. And that it's working on further optimizations. So, yeah, I mean, this this really is wild, especially when we get to the performance. As you can see right here, the hair claiming 28 Zeus GPUs can do what 280 RTX 5090 GPUs required to do. So just wild there. But not only that, this right here is flat out render performance. So this would, of course, be very good when we're talking gaming, stuff like that. And according to them, just a one chiplet Zeus GPU is 2.5 times faster than the 5090 and all four gets all the way up to 10 times faster. Now, 
While it does say rendering, I do believe that this is purely in path tracing, but what's wild is that there's actually a Reddit thread going on that's pretty huge in PC Gaming's Reddit, and basically someone claiming to be with Bolt Graphics, and I will say that this profile is not brand new or anything, this is back in June 2023, actually answered some questions about this, and like I said, this... This is just wild here. And as you can see, it says, Zeus is really optimized for path tracing performance. As they comment, it says, we are designing for a future where path tracing is close to real time, but raster is still supported. It says, Zeus achieves this level of performance. We're also providing a path tracer that we're integrating into Unreal Engine 5. He goes on to state that we are already working with studios to bring games to Zeus. It says we won't be able to do thousands of games quickly, but we are working on this. Newer games with heavy ray, path tracing, and game physics get better performance on Zeus. It says later this year, we'll share benchmarks and demos at conferences. Then it says raster is supported. So this is purely rasterization it says performance is competitive with the RTX 4090 and we're working to improve performance. So once again, they'll be sharing more later. So when it purely comes to rasterization performance, it's supposedly right on the level of the 4090, which still is unreal, especially in newer games that really use a ton of path tracing and stuff like that. It would then probably destroy the 4090 and even the 5090 because don't forget that that 10x level of performance comes, like I said, probably just purely from path tracing. Not only that, but when we go back here, you can actually see the board power. So for the one chiplet one, this is the one that is around 2.5 times faster than the 5090 at path tracing. Uh, that one is just 120 watts. Now the full four chiplet design does go all the way up to 500 watts, but compared to the RTX 5090, that still isn't bad. Basically, at the end of the day, this could completely shift markets. This really is huge, though at the same time, do quell the excitement a little bit. As I talk about it, I'm kind of getting excited myself, but make sure to hold back just because once again, this is a product that has not released yet. A lot of these claims, a lot of times, you know, do end up being a bunch of crap. So, I mean, don't get too excited, but yeah, I'll definitely be watching out for this one. So while that does it for today, let me know if you're excited for this potential GPU down in the comments below. And to get your free 128 gig flash drive, check out my link down in the description below. And as always, have a great day.